Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and in this video I'm going to be setting up the camera system on the Onyx Laser Machine by Monport. Thanks for joining me again on the Laser Channel. This video is part of a dedicated series featuring the Onyx Laser Machine by Monport. This video is designed to get you up and running as quickly as possible utilizing the built-in camera system. To get started, there's a few setup things and materials that we need to gather before we start the camera calibration. One of the most important things that I'm going to need is the test dot pattern provided by Lightburn to calibrate the camera lens. When I download that PNG file and I print it out on my Windows computer, it prints it out on a full size sheet of paper and this is far too large. If I use this, it's never going to pass the calibration test in the Lightburn software. This picture is supposed to be four inches by six inches and it should look something like this. That's why in the video description down below, I've converted that picture file from Lightburn over to a PDF file. And the main reason why I did that is it will print out the correct size. I also went one step further and I put a, uh, a border around that test pattern. That way, when you cut this out, you'll know the proper size to cut it when mounting it up to some cardboard. Just make sure that when you cut this out, we want to cut that black border off. We're going to cut right next to that border. This test pattern has to lay perfectly flat. If this piece of paper starts curling and bending and doing odd things, the camera will not calibrate correctly. I recommend using some of the cardboard that comes with the Onyx machine. The other really important material is some poster board. We're going to use this as a backdrop when we're moving our test pattern around within the work area of the machine as directed by Lightburn software. There's also going to be another step in the camera alignment where the laser will actually be engraving into this. And that's why I like using this poster board from the Dollar Tree because it has a white core to it. When I engrave partially into the material, it reveals that white core, making a very nice contrast between the blue and the white core. I've also tried this using some black poster board. I just made sure that when I picked up my poster board that I picked up several sheets of this blue and several sheets of this black. But again, I found my best success using the blue poster board. The last thing that I'll want to set up before we start the calibration process is I did mention that this poster board will be engraved. I want to make sure that I have some good engraving settings before starting this process. Once I have some good settings, a little tip that I like to do is I take this card with the dot pattern on it and on the back side, I write my engraving settings. When I do the test engraving on here to find my settings, I do want to set the focus of the laser machine. To make sure that the poster board does not shift around, I have it taped down in each of the four corners. There's a piece of tape back there, one right there, and finally, the last one in this corner. I'm now ready to proceed on to step number two, and that is to calibrate the camera. I'll navigate to Laser Tools and select Calibrate camera lens. The camera on the machine is this one right here. I'll verify that I'm clicked on fisheye lens. And do I want to use a preset? No, I want to do a full calibration. I'll proceed by clicking next. And up at the top of the screen here, it's a very small image, but this is going to be the reference image for the placement of our test target down here is a live image. And when I move this target around, I do want to make sure that the lid of the machine is closed. And I'll get my test target lined up to about the center of the machine here. That looks good. And I'm going to uncheck honeycomb. I'll hit capture. 
And I got a score, but it's too high. We're looking for a score of point, uh, excuse me, of 1.0 or less. And I've got 7.75. So I'm going to move this a little bit. And I'll hit capture again. And sometimes I can hit capture again and it will use a different algorithm to find the image. That time it did not. I'm gonna just move that test target around until I get a good capture. This is a great score and I'm ready to hit next. And here it's going to have me move it to what would appear to be at the bottom of the screen. The camera right now is actually going to be mirrored and that's okay. That is going to get fixed in the last step that we do and that is the camera alignment. And it's all right for me to open the lid and reposition the test target. That looks good. I'm ready to proceed on to the next position. Now on this step, I wanna show you something where you see that the test target is really distorted when I compare it to the reference one up at the top of the screen here. And that is because we're using a fisheye lens. And when we take a look at this diagram on the side, it's saying that the test target right here needs to point directly at the camera and right now my test target is directly facing the top of the lid. So I need to find a little spacer to put behind the edge of the test target so it's angled up towards the camera. The other thing that I'm seeing is the blue background that I placed in there, that poster board, this test target is extending what looks like past it just a little bit. I'm going to move my test pattern in just a little bit. That looks good. I'm going to try taking a capture. I grab that one and I'm ready to hit next. I'll move to the other side. I captured that one. I'll click next. I'll move to the top of the screen. This time I have the spacer block pulled out and we'll see if I can capture the image. Yep, is able to capture that image. Now it wants me to go into the corner. And I am making sure that this corner and this corner are not touching the blue backdrop. So here's what I mean. This corner is not touching and this other corner is not touching. It's just this corner and this corner, this way the target is facing up directly towards the camera. And once again, I'm also checking that I can see that blue background all the way around my test target. I found that one, I'm ready to proceed. That's it, you're finished. So without too much fuss, I was able to get the camera aligned. And the whole purpose of this camera alignment is to take that fisheye effect of the, the camera image being distorted, and it's gonna take that and make it look perfectly flat. I'm now ready to align the camera. For this step, because I am going to be engraving, I do need to reinstall the front tray here, making sure that it meets that switch in the back. That way I have the green ring on the top of my machine telling me that it can start doing any lasering. And once again, it's going to ask what camera I'd like to use. It's uh, this one here. This dialog box has a, a lot of verbiage in it and it's just going over what we need to do. It's instructing us to place some material within the work area for the engraving and we've already got that covered with that blue poster board. And it's asking us what the thickness is. It is essentially zero thickness. It's just so thin. Um, I recommend using something thin versus like quarter inch or half inch plywood for this. And now it's going to need some settings here for a uh, fill speed or engraving and then a line speed for line engraving. And that is where 
I wrote my settings down on the back of my test card. And the fill speed, I'm going to use 250 millimeters per second. The line speed is going to be at 200. And the power is going to be at 18.5% for both of these. I'm now ready to turn the exhaust fan on and hit the start button located right here. Oh, before I do that, you might be asking what the scale setting is, and I've never adjusted that when I'm doing a camera alignment on a laser machine. Um, my best guess is that this is the scaling that Lightburn used to make sure that this test pattern behind this dialog box takes up a rather large area so it gets the best camera alignment. At these high speeds, that didn't take very long at all. I'm now ready to hit next. I can hit capture image. With the image captured, I can click next. And what it wants me to do is zoom in on target number one, if I can find it, target number one right here. And you'll see that it's upside down and it's all mirrored uh, from when we did the camera calibration, but this is going to get fixed in this step. So I want to click on the exact center of the target, double click, and now move over to target number two and the exact same thing. That is complete. I'll click next and we're done. To test this out, I'm going to take a post-it note and I place that roughly in the middle of the work area. Once again, I want to make sure that this does not move. I'm going to also tape it down. And now I'm going to move over to the camera tab. If this does not show up on your computer, we can head over to Windows and we're going to make sure that camera control is checked. This is how we make sure that this tab shows up. And now I can click on Update Overlay. And it's going to take a snapshot and it's going to show me the post-it note. I drew a circle in the middle there and we're gonna go over to cuts and layers. And I'm gonna slow this down to maybe 50 millimeters per second and change my power settings. And I just want to cut this out and see how well it aligns up to what we just drew over the top of the post-it. I'll navigate back to camera control and I'll update the overlay again and I'll see that the alignment is pretty darn close. It's off just a little bit. The other neat thing that the camera can do is it can basically scan and trace objects. Let's check that out. Now the best accuracy is going to be directly underneath the camera. Now I can go up here and use the trace function. And what this is going to do is trace everything within the image. And we're going to see that it's also picking up the honeycomb. It's also picking up the state of Wisconsin. And I like that and I'll hit OK. Now I am going to take everything at just scan. And we're going to see when I zoom in, here's all those little bits of the honeycomb that it picked up along with the outer border. And of course, I don't want any of that. So I am going to highlight just the state. Before I do that, though, I need to ungroup everything. And now I can pick just the state of Wisconsin. And we're going to see that all those bits got left behind. I'll highlight all of that. I don't need that anymore and I'll delete that out. And I'm going to take out this piece of artwork and put in some other work material in and we'll see if we can cut another duplicate. For this, I am just gonna kind of throw this down there even at a little bit of an angle. Navigating back to camera control, I'm going to update the overlay once again. Here's my piece of work material and I'm going to grab this. And you see it gets awfully close to the edge there. I don't like that too much. So what I can do is now start tipping my artwork here a little bit and get it repositioned. And this way I know that my graphic is going to fit on the work material. 
And I just have to go back over to cuts and layers and type in some settings that are compatible with this eighth inch hardboard. Let's see how well these two line up to one another. I think they look pretty good side by side. And check that out. The tracing is just a tiny bit larger than the original, but I am very impressed with the results. Thanks for joining me in this video. I hope that this camera setup video really helps you out. If it did, don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. It really helps the channel out, but it's also a great way to connect content like this with other like-minded viewers just like you.